Hey guys, what's going on? Joe Mills here. I'm doing a second portion of the How to Build a Paver Patio video, and I have to do a voiceover of this because the wind noise was too bad. So right now I'm discussing the base material with Justice. The base, we have 6 inches of number 57s that, that's been compacted down. Um, but the Crusher one would be better though. It, crusher one is 3 4 inch stone mixed with stone dust. So the uh, number 57s are packed nice and tight together, but under no circumstances uh, should you use pea gravel. The number 57s pack together much tighter and provide for a much more solid base, whereas the pea gravel has a risk of washing out. And um, like he's explaining here, the rocks kind of compact together like that. With pea gravel, pea gravel doesn't compact together like that, so you have a risk of it washing out, which is not good. Um, so the sand material we have isn't actually really sand. It's uh, called number 10s, which is a mix of small stones and stone dust. Now, the number 10s are preferable to actual construction sand. Construction sand uh, doesn't level as well and tends to hold more water than the number 10s do. The problem with construction sand is because it holds water, when you have a finished patio and you put the compactor on top of it to kind of compact the pavers, the construction sand almost can like dip like that and then you have to go back and fix it so it isn't as well and now I'm going to show you guys what screening sand looks like so right here these rails on the ground are called screed rails with the screed rails that's what we're going to use to basically level off the number 10s to create the solid base for the patio so what we're doing right now is we're filling in number 10s around the screed rails so that we can run our leveling device over top the screed rails. Looks like we have a good amount of number 10s. And then it's very simple, just a board that you slide along sideways along the rails. And you can always add a little extra number 10s in there and just slide it along and that's how you basically create a little base. And you can see I'm making the mistake of just sliding it backwards. You don't want to do what I'm doing right here. You want to slide it back and forth creates a much more level base. Now we're picking up the screed rails and we are moving them so we can uh, move over and continue the next phase of uh, putting down the number 10s. But we have to fill in where the rails were. Very simple little tool there. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's a mason's trowel. Could be wrong on that term but you just got to fill in where the where the trench is, where the rail is, and just smooth that back over. Make sure you're not adding too much number 10s or sand over top. Justice is going to go get the pavers while I continue to fill this back in. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much how you do it. Uh, just cover yourself back over the rails there. Make sure you don't step in your sand, because uh, if you step in your sand, that's obviously something you have to re-level and go back and do again. Alright guys, so right here, same sort of thing again, we've moved the rails over and we've put the number 10s and filled in around the rails and I'm just going to go back through and level off those rails. Uh, pretty simple process um, to get this level patio, but this is what you would call screeding sand. And uh, always make sure to go side to side, just don't pull back with the board uh, like I was doing there. Uh, you got to go side to side the way across makes a much more level plane that's the right way to do it right there just like that so just tell us first how um, you set up the string line and what you were looking for okay so the string line uh, basically is going to be the two sides of our patio here. Uh, to get it square at this, uh, this corner here, we use the 3 4 5 method. Uh, for any of those who think back to high school geometry, uh, I have some bad memories too. Don't worry. <laughs> um, 3 4 5 method utilizes a Pythagorean triple, which uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared 
equals 5 squared. Uh, so what we can do using that is measure 3 feet on one side of the string line, mark it, go to the next side of the string line, measure 4 feet, mark where that's at, and then uh, from there, our mark. We're trying really hard not to disturb the sand because we just screeded it. So. Yeah. Our mark should be exactly five feet from the other side of the string line. So it creates a right triangle. Right. So, once you get your sand screened out, uh, you can start laying your pavers. Don't screen more sand, and you can lay pavers in a day. So you have to come back the next day and re-screed the sand that was not laid. But anyways, when you place a paver down, you're looking to go straight down onto the sand Butt it up against the other blocks and just let it down slowly. <clears throat> this this uh, will prevent any disturbing of the sand if you have to pick it up. If you drop the paver in like that, you mess your sand up. And you gotta go back and fix it. Having to fix your sand not only leads to using more time on the job, but it also increases your paver's susceptibility to do that. Anyways, the pattern we're laying here is called an I pattern. Uh, some people uh, know it as a K pattern, but it looks like an I. Uh, you'll see more of it when we get more of it laid. All right guys, so right here you can tell that typically on a hardscape job there's one guy laying and there's one guy bringing him the block. You can guess which guy I am, I'm the guy bringing him the block. Uh, once you get your pattern down and you lay your soldier course and you know what pattern you are doing, it gets really easy to just uh, continue to lay. That's why it's even easier just to have one guy lay and uh, one guy bring the block especially on a small project like this. Um, so yeah, as we explained before, make sure you don't uh, add out too much sand so that you can uh, lay on top of what sand you've already uh, screwed out. But the most important thing is to keep your soldier, soldier course up to date and just remember what pattern you're doing and uh, have some fun while you're doing it. It occurred to me that I never fully explained what a soldier course is. The soldier course is basically the pavers on the outside of the patio that basically provide the border. That's called the soldier course, and in case you guys were confused. Alright guys, so the paper pattern we ended up putting down here is called an eye pattern. It's a bunch of eyes basically. So the eyes basically feed into one another. So the stem of that eye feeds into that eye. And then if you can see there on the screen, that eye, middle of that eye, feeds into the footer of that eye. And basically, it just feeds on. All well, equipment for tonight since it's getting dark out. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much the basics of the patio. All right, guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Thanks to you to Justice for putting up with me and being on camera. 
I really appreciate it. See you guys later.